Thank you. So headlining today is my friend from WOK, DB, Derek Bozeman. DB in the building. Let's give him a hand. Let's give him a hand. <laughs> DB Bozeman. What's happening, East Point? Oh, y'all can do better than that. Y'all all right on this Juneteenth? Against my doctor's order and on this bad foot, I said I had to be here this morning. Let me first of all thank this mayor and this city council and one of the most progressive, fastest growing. If I didn't live in Atlanta all my life, I would move to East Point. And to our wonderful congresswoman, y'all make some noise for Nakima Williams. Nakima Williams! She followed in the footstep of a legend, the conscience of the Congress, the late John Lewis. Let's give him a round of applause for all of the years that he served us, the boy from Troy. I'm not going to be long, but I'm going to be strong. And July 4th, 1776, in Philadelphia, there were a group of 56 men who came together to sign the Emancipation Proclamation. It led to a founding of a constitution in a new republic called these yet to be United States of America. In 1776, some of the words that were floating around at that time were words like we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal. They are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights and among them a life and liberty in the pursuit of happiness. But that was just one problem. In 1776, melanated, woolly-haired descendants of Africa, the sons and daughters of Africa, were not in that we the people that they were talking about because they were enslaved here in these yet-to-be United States of America. And so it took all the way from 1776 to 1865, not even on Juneteenth or June 19th, 1865. On April 8th, 1865, another document emerged called the 13th Amendment, which says that no man or woman should be held except for punishment of crime and involuntary servitude. But what was going on in these yet to be United States of America? That was fighting in a conflict because that was the Confederate States of America. That was some within our own boundaries and within our own borders that were insurrectionists. They said they didn't want no part of the union. They didn't want no part of this wonderful tapestry of America. They said they were going to fight to the very end at the surrender of Appomattox when General Robert E. Lee finally gave up to General Ulysses S. Grant, which caused the end of the Civil War. That happened in April of 1865, but the folks down in Texas, that was really a territory of Mexico. Texas was a territory of Me Mexico, got its sovereignty from Mexico, and it said, we are unique, we're gonna fly our own flag, and it will have a single star because we're not a part of the United States of America. And to this day, they still call themselves the Long Star State. But let me tell you what happened in between. Lincoln came to be the president, 1861, the Civil War is waging, raging, and he has to be confronted because he's losing to the Confederate States, and he, he made a critical decision. He said, if we are to save this union, we need to let some of these brothers come and fight for us. So when a black man joined the Union Army, when we show up as black men, we show out. That brought an end to the war. They said, look, now I don't know who these dark-skinned Africans are, but they fight with a certain kind of fierceness. They fight like Hank Stewart fight. They fight like William Bowden fight. They fight like Councilman Butler fight. They fight. And we win. Brothers and sisters, I'm here with one simple message. When we fight, we win. When it comes to voter suppression, we got nothing left to do but to fight. When it comes to 2021 and the modern day iteration of trying to return us to the plantation, we've got nothing left to do but to what? Fight. 
And so on June 19th, 1865, General Gordon Granger marched into Galveston Bay, Texas, but he did not march by himself. Some of those brothers who had fought in the war on the side of the Union said, General, can we follow you into Texas? And so he came with 2,500 soldiers. 2,500 soldiers, but guess what? There were 250,000 enslaved Africans still experiencing slavery in Texas. He came with general order number three, which says that not only are you free, but you enjoy the same benefits as anybody else, as any other citizen of this state, any other citizens of this United States. And so today, we celebrate Juneteenth as a resistance and as when we fight, we will win. You do not have the ability, you do not have the wherewithal, you do not have the power to go home and sit down in 2021. You've got to fight in the name of those who in 1865 declared like Fannie Lou Hamer, we are sick and tired of being sick and tired. And so we said today from East Point, Georgia, to every force that will try to take us back. That we came here to do what? We ready to rock and roll with those who ready to fight with us. Because the arc of the Mar universe is long, but it bends towards justice, but it don't bend on its own. We got to have some arc benders in this day and time. And so I'm so glad that the city of East Point is standing up, and when we stand up, they're playing a game on your backs, but when you stand up, the game is over. And so thank you, East Point, for thinking and not robbery to call us together at a time such as this. In the raining season, which reminds us of a weeping time in Savannah, the largest auctioning of black lives happened right in Savannah, Georgia, March 6, 1859. Nearly 500 men, women, and children put up on the auction block. But we come today to declare that we're not going back. We're ready to fight. Are y'all ready to fight? I said, are you ready to fight? Are you ready to register and go vote? Are you registered to fight against voter suppression? Are you ready to go get an ID of whatever the rules are? Let them know that strong men and women just keep on coming. Thank y'all so much. The struggle continues.